Now we are live. Shall I start? Yes. So good evening to one and all. As a part of the World Leprosy Day program, we, the Department of DVL, we're presenting before you three different clinical presentations of the same disease. And this is to make you a little familiar with the disease. Uh, yes, of course, you all, would have you, you all would have guessed it. The disease that I'm referring to is leprosy or also known as Hansen's disease. So before I go on to the case presentation, I would like to give a justification for our title. Now, why did we give, our, give a title of a disease that knows no boundaries? This is because the three case presentations that we're going to give you all today are three, are three patients from three different socioeconomic status. And hence, this disease knows no boundaries. So to begin with, the first patient, uh, she was a 50-year-old lady who presented to us in the DVL OPD, and she complained of reddish raised skin lesions over her cheek and her forehead. And she also gave a history of photosensitivity. She had numbness of both her feet, left feet more than the right. And this was over a period of one year. Her complaints were all through this one year, and she uh, consulted various physicians, various neurologists, underwent thorough investigations, multiple CTs and MRIs of the spine. Uh, but however, the search for the diagnosis continued. So this was how when she presented to us, as you can see the picture on the left, we can see an inverted saucer-shaped erythematous plaque. The picture on the right, uh, both her malar areas, she had similar erythematous plaques, and even on the forehead and uh, the nose. This is another picture that shows infiltration of her ear lobe. So this was how she clinically presented to us in the OPD. As we saw from the picture, she had erythematous plaques over the malar areas, forehead, and erythematous infiltration of both her external ears. She had inverted saucer-shaped erythematous plaques and similar asymmetrical plaques over the uh, shins, both her shins. Uh, when we did a peripheral nerve examination, we found that the left lateral popliteal nerve alone was thickened, and the patient also had a foot drop of the left leg. Uh, she had an incomplete glove and stocking type of anesthesia as well. So, uh, however, leprosy is a clinical diagnosis. So, we didn't want to go for a skin biopsy. However, she had done it from an outside hospital. We moved on to do a slit skin smear because we saw that the ear lobes were infiltrated. And the slit skin smear turned out positive, And this confirmed our diagnosis of lepromatous spectrum of leprosy. So we moved on to treat her with multibacillary, multidrug therapy was started. Moving on to the second patient. This was a young man who came from Ajman, UAE, mm -hmm. where he resided with his wife. And when he came to us, he gave a history of having noticed whitish patches just above his eyebrows and over the dorsum of his left hand. And he gave a history of having noticed this six months back. When we examined him, we found that he had hypopigmented patches over the do dorsum of his left hand, and it was anesthetic and ichthyotic with uh, loss of hair. And the patches on the face, look, face looked similar, but that had no anesthesia. And we also noticed that he had super, uh, supraciliary madurosis. When, when we did a peripheral nerve examination, we found that uh, multiple peripheral nerves were thickened. And uh, again, we stuck on to our clinical instincts, though um, patches were only three, the presence of many thickened nerves confirmed our diagnosis as multiple, multibacillary Hansen's disease. So uh, this is the picture, uh, that this is the photograph that we took when he came to our OPD. And uh, as we described earlier, we can see that on the left side, we can see the hypopigmented patch on the dorsum of his left hand. And the photograph on the right, shows a similar erythematous plaque and the madrosis can also be appreciated there. And moving on to our third patient, this was a 43 year old young executive who was in Paris and he complained of insensitivity to cold. He could even walk around without socks, even when it snowed and it was really cold outside. And uh, this patient, he had a past history of being treated for tuberculoid Hansen's disease for numbness and weakness of his left hand. And, 
at that time he had a chance finding of a hypopigmented macule of, over his left elbow and this was a history 10 years ago so uh, and he was diabetic and he was on treatment but uh, when he presented to us he did not have any obvious uh, uh, clean, uh, skin manifestation but with the prior history that he gave us and also the uh, uh, the complaints of having uh, numbness and weakness of his left hand we again uh, went by our clinical uh, instincts and we confirmed it um, as uh, uh, hansen's multibacillary hd uh, when we, we, there was no hypopigmented skin patches when we examined him but there were multiple thickened peripheral nerves that is the left lateral popliteal the left ulnar the left radial cutaneous nerve of the forearm and also the right uh, radial cutaneous nerve of forearm was found to be thickened he also had a patchy loss of uh, sensation which was of glove and stocking type uh, when we did a slit skin smear the afb was negative there were no oral or uh, nas nasal mucosal uh, uh, lesions found and this finally we uh, confirmed our diagnosis as multibacillary hd so like that we come to an end to our three clinical presentation um, i would like to hand over to our uh, hod ambujam ma'am and our senior consultant nancy ma'am for the further discussion of these cases thank you over to you ma'am yeah am i audible yes sir yes okay good evening everybody and uh, now the jinsi has presented the clinical scenarios she said that it's a disease crossing boundaries which has which has no boundaries the here the socio economic status is different even boundaries regarding the organs affected it's a disease that knows no boundaries when it affects the organs and it's also a disease where interdisciplinary team may no, may no. Find these the symptoms patient like may present to different different doctors for the manifestation no. so that way also it has no boundary now different types of clinical presentations see leprosy as you know is caused by mycobacterium leprae all of us know and what is the portal of entry of the organism it is through the portal of exit is from the patient's uh, nasal or oral secretions that is droplet infections portal of entry is again the same yes okay so we would like to tell you that this disease takes it has a very long incubation period why because of the bacilli bacilli has a long it has a, a big generation period that is the generation time is one bacilli multiplying into two it takes at least two weeks so this is a disease where to get a sufficient inoculum to produce a clinical pattern it take a several several years so disease with a lo long incubation period and we should all know that this disease does not spread just like that because 90 to 95% of us exposed to the bacilli will not body's own immune response will take care of that okay but once inside in those susceptible people where the cell mediated immune response is less they get this manifestation of the disease disease can manifest as hypopigmented anesthetic macule as you have seen in the second case scenario the second patient from a lower socio economic group where he had a well defined anesthetic hypopigmented macule and it can also be like the second the first patient whom we, the first lady whom we presented to you multiple erythematous plaques erythematous plaques is a sign of inflammation of the leprosy type lepra reaction but usually it is hypopigmented macules and when it comes to lepromatous leprosy where the bacillary load is very high where lepremia happens then the whole skin can be involved the symmetry as you go along the from tuberculosis to lepromatous leprosy we get to, we get to see symmetry so see, and nerve involvement will be glove and stocking type of nerve involvement rather than just single one or two nerve involvement so in the first lady she had multiple erythematous plaques she also had a one or two nerves thickened and she had a earlobe infiltration so all these pointed to a lepromatous type of leprosy in the second case there was only one hypopigmented macule on the hand and two over the face so he had only three 
but multiple nerves were involved. So that all that also we uh, thought diagnosed it as a case of multibacillary Hansen's. Then the third case, in which there were no skin lesions, only multiple nerves were involved. No, the skin lesions were not there, but only multiple nerves which were taken. That we put under we categorize as the pure neurotic type of leprosy. Other than these, leprosy can have different other types of uh, lesions on the skin. That is especially lepromatous leprosy. It can be macules or maculopapular lesions. It can be, sorry, maculoanesthetic lesions. It can be papules, plaques, nodules. So all types of lesions happen in leprosy. And when it is a reaction, it will become painful. They can ulcerate. They can have lesions called erythema nodosum, leprosum as a part of type 2 reaction. So as far as the manifestation of leprosy is concerned on the skin, there also it knows no boundaries. Then why we need to think of leprosy in these patients? We have not done, slit skin smear was positive in one patient, the first patient. The other two, we have not done slit skin smear. It was done, but found to be negative. Why we, this leprosy is a clinical diagnosis, but why should we do these uh, confirmatory tests? When you do a slit skin smear, you're directly seeing the acid fast bacillus. That is the most confirmatory of the disease. And when you do a skin biopsy, as you all know, we'll see granulomas along the neurovascular bundles. But that is, we do this because it's a disease with a stigma and we need to have proof that we were right in our diagnosis and for giving the treatment. Then coming to the one thing you need to know about leprosy is that this is the only bacteria that affects the skin as well as the peripheral nerves. So even if there are no lesions on the skin, if peripheral nerves are thickened, the first diagnosis we make in a country like India is Hansen's disease. And you know that Hansen's disease is around 60% of Hansen's disease in the whole world is from India. And presently, more than 2 lakh patients are there in the whole world with leprosy. So I just wanted to tell you again, end with the cardinal features of leprosy. Number one, hypopigmented anesthetic macule, as you have seen in the hand of that second patient. Number two, thickened peripheral nerves. All these three patients had thickened peripheral nerves. And the commonest nerve to be involved in leprosy is the ulnar nerve because it is the coolest nerve. It is a more superficial nerve. So that is a commonest nerve to be, peripheral nerve to be involved in leprosy. So that is the second point, involvement of the thickening of the peripheral nerves. And the third point is demonstration of the acid fast bacilli. But in all patients, we may not get the acid fast bacilli. It's only when the immunity is so low, cell mediated immune response is so low that the load of the bacilli becomes very high. And then can you do a slit skin smear either from the earlobe or from the uh, representative skin lesions, AFB can be demonstrated by Zine Yeltsin method. So this is in a in a nutshell about how leprosy does not know barriers of socioeconomic status or even the skin lesions can go can be in various types of skin lesions and lepromatous leprosy can involve all the organs except central nervous system and uh, female reproductive organs. Other than that, lepromatous leprosy can go to all organs. Thank you. Do you have any doubts regarding the clinical presentations? I didn't talk to you about lepra reactions. Maybe just two sentences I will tell. Lepra reactions are inflammations in leprosy. And this is precipitated by certain situations. Type 1 lepra reaction, type 2 lepra reaction. It is based on the immunological uh, reactions that happen due to the, as a result of the uh, response to the bacilli. So type 1 lepra reaction is type 4 in Coombs and Gels, delayed hypersensitivity reaction. And type 2 lepra reaction is type 3, Arthur's phenomenon or immune complex reaction. And naturally, it's a vasculitis. So it will be all over the body. So that happens only where lepromatous, in lepromatous leprosy alone, you, we get type 2 reactions. Type 1 reactions, any patient like up to borderline lepromatous leprosy can get type 1 reaction. Just one or two lines about type 1 reaction. It is It does not have any systemic manifestations. 
the skin lesions will look erythematous like the first one you have seen the first lady she had some uh, skin lesions which were on the which were erythematous instead of hypopigmented uh, anesthetic macules so skin lesion existing skin lesions become erythematous and or fresh lesions may appear and patient may have acute onset of paralysis so nerve dysfunction like an ulna paralysis or a foot drop so that is where we think of type 1 type 2 reactions are where either in borderline lepromatous or lepromatous only in that spectrum and then patient will be febrile can have all the itis all inflammation uh, inflammation iridocyclitis then uh, uh, neuritis then uh, erythema nodosum leprosum like lesions then uh, osteitis glomerulonephritis pneumonitis carditis so all the itis all organs i told you except myelitis neuromyelitis or encephalitis meningitis that is those things do central nervous system is not involved as also female reproductive system we do not know why so based on this only we start them on uh, treatment okay so that is about the reactions or inflammations in leprosy which is also very important i think uh, i have more or less covered the clinical uh, features and if you have any doubts you could ask now itself students otherwise dr nancy will take over regarding the treatment of leprosy good evening to all uh, i'll be talking to you on the treatment aspect of leprosy so who has recommended treatment uh, on the basis of basilary index and morphological index and also according to the clinical diagnosis that we have made so it can be categorized into posi basilary or and multi basilary leprosy so posi basilary for posi basilary leprosy who recommends monthly supervised prednisone 600 mg fluoxetine uh, no sorry that's on 100 mg daily for about 6 months and the surveillance for 2 years after the treatment is over patient uh, be subject to slit skin smear and assess the prognosis by basilary index for multi basilary leprosy the who recommends rifampicin supervised under supervision for uh, 600 mg once a month clofosamine 300 mg once a month dapsone 100 mg daily and clofosamine 50 mg daily for a period of 1 year and the surveillance time is up to 5 years with slit skin smear and if needed skin biopsy so during the period of treatment the patient can have as madam told the patients can have reactions uh, re uh, uh, for this so up to borderline lepromatous patient can have reversal reactions like type 1 hypersensitive type 1 reaction and for lepromatous they can have uh, erythema nodosum leprosum vasculitic lesions with all other multi organ involvement so if the patient goes in for three for uh, reactions especially type 1 reaction the patient can have neuritis the patient can have Uh, exacerbation of the persisting lesions with edema erythema and uh, exa exacerbation of lesions patient should be admitted to see whether there is any any neurological deficit that happens like foot drop uh, uh, and patient is to be started on systemic steroids 
daily recommendation of 40 to 60 mg prednisolone, which is slowly tapered off within a period of three to four months. So we have to monitor the patient for any side effects of steroids along with the other complications or side effects of the drug. For multibacillary uh, ENL lesions, we can give steroids and clofosamine can be increased. And we, uh, some people recommend even thalidomide uh, for ENL lesions. Over to Madam for any. Any queries you have? Thank you, Nancy. Anything? Any queries, students? Any doubts? Are you all sleeping? No, ma'am. <laughs> you understood everything or you have no doubts? Either you understood or you didn't understand? Uh, we understood, ma'am. Okay, any doubts? Nice, nice that you understood. Any doubts? Amy? No, ma'am. Okay, then. Uh, okay, then, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, after the webinar, now we have uh, the next event for the day. Uh, that is the undergraduate quiz. Sorry, there is a problem with this. Just give me a minute. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, we are sorry for the delay. Uh, we'll have a five minute gap. The camera on there. We can have a
Shall I start? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the delay. Um, so today we have uh, the undergraduate quiz on leprosy uh, 2021 in association with the World Leprosy Day. Uh, so today, uh, first we'll introduce the teams. So uh, we have uh, five teams from 2018 MBBS batch. Uh, so, uh, I'll just introduce the teams. Uh, please answer if you're there. Team A, Hasha Joseph and Fahana Firoz. Is Team A there? Team A? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Um, team B, Varun and Vrishnu Priyan. Team B is ready? Team B, Varun, Vishnu Priyan. Uh, team C, Amy and Pradeep and Anju M. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, team D, Alan Sunny, Fionn Biju. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Last team, team E, Lakshmi Shankar, Madhumita. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I didn't get a reply from team B. Are they still participating? Varun and Vishnu Priyan. Is any of them here? Okay, uh, so today we have only four teams. Is that right? So uh, we have team uh, A, Hasha and Fahana, team B, Amy and Anju, team C, Alan and Fion, and team D, Lakshmi and Madhumita. Uh, so with these four teams, all from 2018 batch, we'll go ahead with the quiz. Uh, shall we give a round of applause for 2018 batch for their enthusiastic participation? Uh, so let's go ahead with the rules. 
Uh, today we have four rounds. We'll have one question each for each of the teams. Uh, we'll skip the last question in each round as we have only four teams today. One team has dropped out. Uh, so these are the rules. Uh, we will have only uh, one person to answer for each team. So please decide among yourselves who will be answering. Uh, if both of you answer, only the first answer will be considered, even though your second answer may be right. So please decide among yourselves. And from the time that I stop reading the question, you will get a time of 15 seconds to answer a direct question. So I'll be directing the questions at each of the teams in turn. So from the time the answer is read out, you'll get a 15 seconds to answer a direct question. And if you answer a direct question correctly, you will get 20 points. But if you answer an indirect question incorrectly, you will get a negative of five points. So if you do not know the answer, please pass the question to the next team. And once the question is passed, it has to be answered immediately by the next team, or it will be answered, passed on towards to the uh, immediate team after. So you do not get any extra time to answer a question that is passed. And if you answer a pass question correctly, you will get 10 points. For a pass question, there is no negative mark. Uh, so direct answer question, answer is 20 points. Uh, negative uh, marking is minus five if you don't if you answer incorrectly uh, you can pass the question and a pass question will get 10 points if you answer it correctly so shall we begin so we'll start with round one uh, so this is not a question this is uh, Gerhard uh, Henrik Amer Hansen uh, who discovered that mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy so prior to that it was thought to be a hereditary disease so, uh, so we'll start the first round or the history round. So this is the direct question to team A, that is uh, Hasha and Fahana. Uh, so this is a very uh, familiar and famous image. Uh, so uh, one person is very familiar to us. It is uh, uh, father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. He's nursing somebody lying on the bed. So he was a patient with leprosy. Uh, he's also quite a famous personality in his own right. So the question is, and uh, identify the second person in the image. There are 15 seconds now. Direct question to team A. Pass. Okay, pass. Uh, team B. So now we have uh, So could you say it once more? Parshure Shastri. Yeah. So 10 points to team B. It's Pashure Shastri, who was a Sanskrit scholar, a Vedic scholar. He was also a freedom fighter and a poet in his own right. He was jailed for quite a period of time uh, during the freedom fight, uh, often simultaneously at the same time as Mahatma Gandhi. And even though he was afflicted with leprosy, uh, he lived in the same ashram as Mahatma Gandhi's uh, in Varda, in Maharashtra. And as there is a hut that is still maintained in his memory there. So uh, the answer was Pasture Shastri with 10 points to team B. Now we have the direct question to team B. Identify this person. Uh, Okay, uh, pass question to team C. Identify this personality. Uh, shepherd. Um, yeah, uh, can you say that once more? Shepherd. Yeah, Charles Shepherd. So the answer is right. Um, team C gets 10 points. Uh, this is Charles C. Shepherd, who was an American microbiologist. And he succeeded in cultivating M. leprae for the first time under laboratory conditions in the foot pad of suckling mice. Uh, so uh, now we have the direct question to team C. Uh, so Dapson was one of the earliest therapies to be started for leprosy. Uh, but Dapson monotherapy resulted in drug resistance. Uh, so for this, multidrug therapy was introduced. And the question is, in which year was multidrug therapy first suggested by WHO for leprosy? The first, the year in which it was first recommended by WHO. 1992. Uh, sorry, the answer is wrong. So you get uh, minus five. T 
Team D, do you have the answer? Pass to Team A. Team B. Okay, uh, so the answer is... Uh, I'm sorry, you have already passed. Uh, you have to answer immediately. Uh, so for this uh, question, nobody gets marks. 1981 is the answer. It was first recommended in 1981, though the free supply of MDT started only in 1995. So uh, the first recommendation of multidrug therapy for leprosy, which we currently have now, came in 1981. So uh, now we have the next question, the direct question to team D. Uh, identify this personality. Uh, so pass to team A, team B, team C, uh, do any of you have the answer? Okay, uh, so uh, this is Dr. Paul Brandt, who was a missionary doctor in Vellur. He was born to missionary parents in India and he worked as a doctor in Vellur for almost 50 years. And he was the first one to discover that in leprosy, the uh, tissues are healthy. The skin does not, the skin and tissues do not rot away. Uh, the tissue damage and the ulcers result from the lack of pain, which makes them susceptible to repeated injury. And he was also a, a renowned surgeon who pioneered many techniques for tendon transfer for correction of deformities in leprosy. Uh, so this is Dr. Paul Brandt. Uh, we'll be skipping the next question as we don't have the 15. Uh, now we come to round two. Again, we'll be starting from team A. Uh, so is team A ready? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so direct question to team A. Other than mycobacterium leprae, name one species which also causes leprosy. Um, sorry that... Uh, pass to team B. Team C. Team D. Okay. Uh, so the none of the teams get a point for this question. It is mycobacterium lepromatosis. Uh, this species was discovered in Mexico in 2008 and it causes diffuse lepromatous leprosy, also referred to as luteal leprosy. Uh, so, next question is a direct question to team B. M. leprae is a slow-growing bacteria and it has a very long incubation time. And the slow growth often makes it very difficult to grow in the laboratory. So, the question to team B is, what is the doubling time of mycobacterium leprae? Ma'am? Uh, yeah. 20 hours. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong answer. Pass to okay. team C. Ma team C, do you have the answer? Team D? Uh, 12 to 13 days. 12 to 13 days, okay. Uh, team A, do you have a different answer? That's just team D, right? Team D says 12 to 13 hours. If team A doesn't have a Days, no. Days. Yeah. Okay. If that's team D, that is close. Uh, so around 13 to 14 days. So team D gets 10 points. So uh, 14 days. Uh, 11 to 14 days is good enough. Um, so to put that in perspective, mycobacterium leprae is extremely slow dividing. So for example, staph aureus, which commonly causes skin infections, has a doubling time of only 27 minutes. And mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is itself said to be very slow dividing, has a doubling time of 18 to 54 hours. So uh, this is uh, the M. leprae has a doubling time in days or two weeks. Uh, so next we have the direct question to team C. Uh, identify this animal. 
nine banded armadillo okay very good answer so they get 20 points uh, so this is the nine banded armadillo could you also tell me why it is important in leprosy and you already got the points uh, it is used for the cultivation of uh, mycobacteria lepre yeah it's one of the animals it's in the yeah yeah so it it's an animal model you can cultivate mycobacterium lepre and obtain required high bacillary loads so it provides a, a high load of mycobacterium lepre for biochemical and immunological research this includes the development of a vaccine so this image was of nine banded armadillo now we have the direct question to team d uh, so as we all uh, know this is the image of a slit skin smear this is acid fast staining or the modified zeal nielsen staining uh, so the question to team d actually has two parts uh, so you'll get 10 marks each uh, for the first question would be uh, name the two stains the which one stains the pink elements and which one stains the blue elements and second is how does the staining process differ from that for mycobacterium tuberculosis so team d can answer can you name the stains uh stain by uh, zeal nielsen technique using fibers and sulfuric acid uh, no you can have to name the pink stain and the blue stain So zeal nielsen stain, you stain with one first, then you decalvise with acid, and then you stain with another second. Do you have an answer? No, second stain is methylene blue. Yeah, one is methylene blue. So I'll give you five marks for that. Can you name uh, the other? Carbol one? fusion. Carbol fusion. And uh, think you have timed out, but if you can answer the difference in staining process, I'll give it to you now. based on the uh, percentage of uh, sulfuric acid yeah uh, so what is the exact difference ma'am in uh, tb the uh, it is 20 percentage and in mycobacterium lepre it's 5 percentage okay so which is more acid first um, tb is more acid first yeah, mycobacterium tuberculosis is more acid first so uh, the pink element is carbol fusion and the blue elements are stained by methylene blue so you use carbol fusion first you decolorize with acid and the acid fast elements retain the pink color the the background does not retain the pink color and it becomes stained by the stained blue by the second stain that is methylene blue and uh, uh, so your my mycobacterium tuberculosis is uh, more acid fast so you can use a higher concentration of acid uh, for decolorizing so team d gets uh, 20 points so this is the end of second round um, we'll wait a bit for the final scores uh, so now we have a uh, team d uh, leading with 30 points team c uh, second with 25 points uh, team a uh, zero points so far team b uh, has a minus 5 uh, but early days yet don't lose hope you can we have we are only half way through uh, sorry uh, team b has uh, sorry third is team b with uh, five points so team a is uh, has zero points so team d leading with 30 team c leading with 25 team b five points and team a zero points uh, so early days yet now we go on to the next third round Uh, so the third and fourth rounds are uh, basically therapy and prevention so now we'll start from the other end that is uh, the first we'll have a direct question to team d uh, so team d uh, can you tell me the uh, relevance of these colors in leprosy not drug resin yeah uh, could you explain I'm sorry. Now we have to explain. Uh, ma'am, for, uh, for possibly leprosy, uh, dapsone and, rif uh, and rifampicin is given. Uh, while uh, for multi multi vascular, uh, dapsone, rifampicin, and uh, clofazimin is given. 
Yeah, but why are these colors relevant? There are four colors here. How are how are they relevant to therapy? Mm. Uh, I think we'll pass to team A. Can team A tell me why these colors are relevant? Team B. Team C. Okay, uh, so these are the colors of the blister packs in uh, multidrug therapy. So you have for multibacillary in adults, you have the red blister pack, which as Team B already said, there are three drugs in it. Uh, for the posibacillary adult therapy, we have the green blister pack. Then the orange or blue are the colors for the blister packs in children. Uh, so they have lower dose, but the same drugs. So these are the blister packs of MDT regimen. Uh, now we have the next question. This is the direct question to team C. Which was the first effective drug introduced for the therapy of leprosy? Direct question to team C. The first drug introduced, or the first antibiotic introduced in the therapy of leprosy, which is effective. Uh, pass to uh, no that's negative pass uh, sorry one minute we'll pass to team A team B team C uh, sorry C is already over D that's on uh, sorry, uh, that's the past question. You don't get negative marks. The first drug introduced was actually related to Dapson, but it was promin or sodium glucosulfone. It is an injectable drug which is converted to Dapson in the body. It was first used in 1941, and Dapson was introduced after that. And Dapson was an oral formulation, but both were sulfones. Uh, so no points to anyone for this particular question. Next, we have the direct question to team B. Uh, which drug in multidrug therapy typically causes headache? And this is classically described as being woolly headed. A direct question to team B. Dapson. Yeah, that's the right answer. 20. Uh, so the next question is the direct question to team A. A patient started on MBMDT reports after four weeks of therapy with fever and generalized maculopapular rash. On examination, he is pale as well as ectric. What do you suspect? Heparin toxicity of rifampicin. Uh, no, uh, negative five. Uh, from A, we'll pass to D. Team D, do you have the answer? Team C, Team B, Hepatotoxicity. Yeah, there is Hepatotoxicity, but there are other features as well. Uh, so no marks to any of the teams for this. Uh, so this is Dapson syndrome or Sulfone syndrome. It's a form of drug hypersensitivity reaction. And it typically develops around two to eight weeks after starting Dapson. So it was referred to as the fifth week Dapson dermatitis. Uh, it is a severe life-threatening form of drug reaction, which typically presents with fever, rash, and internal organ involvement, which includes hepatitis. And they also can have hemolytic anemia, uh, exfoliative dermatitis or erythroderma, and lymphadenopathy. So here, what is important is the timing, the nature of the rash, which is usually maculopapular, and hepatitis, which is frequent with dapsone and hemolytic anemia. So that is why the patient has hepatitis, the ictus, and pallor. Uh, so we are skipping the fifth question, meant for the last team. Uh, now we come to the last round. Uh, again, uh, we'll be going from team D to A. So direct question to team D. Uh, so this is an image of a child with a congenital anomaly. 
can you link this anomaly to leprosy in any way or can you mention what is the anomaly Thalidomide. Yeah, is that team D? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So how is that linked to leprosy? If you can answer that, otherwise I'll give you half and then we'll pass. Ma'am. Mm, okay, we'll give 10 marks to team D, but uh, pass to team A. Can you tell me how thalidomide is linked to leprosy? It is used to, to treat erythema nodosum leprosum. Yes, so it is used in chronic ENLs. Uh, so that is the right answer. So we'll give 10 to team A. Uh, can you name the anomaly as well? The typical limb deformity caused by thalidomide? Pomelia. Okay, so team D gets. 10 for partial answer and team A gets 10. Uh, now we'll go to the direct question to team C. Uh, in leprosy, the disease is characterized by neuropathy. Neuropathy is a very intrinsic part of leprosy. Name any two drugs used in the treatment of leprosy that can also cause neuropathy. So direct question to team C. If you can name one used in treatment in any way, treatment of leprosy, treatment of reactions. Okay, I think now we need to pass to team D. Team A. Can you name any drug used in leprosy that can also cause neuropathy? Team B. Uh, so, we don't have a right answer. Uh, Dapsone that is used uh, in multidrug therapy can cause motor neuropathy. And thalidomide which is used for treatment of type 2 lepra reactions can cause sensory neuropathy. So, sometimes in leprosy, neuropathy can also be the result of the drugs used to treat it. Uh, now, we have the third question that is a direct question to team B. Uh, can you name two second line drugs used in leprosy? Any two second line drugs? Ma'am? Ma'am? Uh, any two second line drugs used in leprosy? Minocycline? Yeah. Clarithromycin? Yes. Uh, so that is 20 points to team B for the right answer. So these are the second line drugs. Clarithromycin, minocycline, moxifloxacin and ofloxacin. So other than any of the antibiotics used, other than those in the multidrug therapy are second line. Uh, so we have uh, the last question that is uh, direct question to team A. Uh, MIP is a heat kill vaccine that was developed in India and that has been found effective in trials for both the prevention and uh, the immunotherapy in leprosy. Uh, can you expand MIP? Team A. Uh, your time is up. Team B. <laughs> Expand MIP. Ma'am, A or Team B? Uh, now B. A A's time is up. So Mycobacterium. Indicus prani. Yeah. Mycobacterium indicus prani is the right answer. So you have 10. Team B. Team B, 10 points. That is team B, right? Now that answered. Yes, ma'am. So 10 points to team B. Uh, so we'll have a moment while the scores are calculated. Uh, thank you. So now we have come to the end of our quiz. Uh, thank you for the enthusiastic participation, particularly to the 2018 MBBS batch.
Uh, so now we have the winners. Team D uh, with, uh, is first with uh, 40 points. Uh, Lakshmi Shankar and Madhumita. Uh, team B comes second with 35 points. Uh, that is Amy uh, Ann and Anju M. Team C comes third with 20 points. Alan Sunny and Fionn Biju. And team A comes last with five points. Hasha and Fahana. Uh, thank you all for your brilliant participation today. Uh, we'll see you next year, hopefully with uh, a quiz. And hopefully we'll have much more answers uh, that day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma uh, now we'll also be announcing the winners of the poster contest. So we had a poster making competition uh, in association with the leprosy day. The theme was prevention of deformity in leprosy. Uh, the winners are uh, from the nursing college, Anupriya CK and Jyoti NJ. Uh, so uh, their poster will be put up on our Instagram page and Facebook page and also in the department of DBL. Uh, thank you, Anupriya and Jyoti for your participation. And we thank all the participants uh, who sent in the posters. Good night, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, logging into our webinar and thank you for your patient in listening today. Indeed, yes. uh, we are offline, no? Hello, <laughs> hello. Thank you.